what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here in this video we're going to talk about what it could look like if jeepers creepers were to ever get rebooted if that's even a possibility and how that would ultimately play out now off the bat of course it's always a possibility possibility that we could get another jeepers creepers movie several decades later from now once victor salva would have un unfortunately passed away because I believe at that point anyone who understands how IPs work you can add some clarity down in the comment section if Victor Salva were to pass away uh, I do believe that would make it up for grabs in regards to who could buy out that property and then they could do what they solely please with it as long as they are not revisiting any characters from what he had already created so we wouldn't be getting a continuation of Trisha's story we wouldn't be seeing any returns of Giselle the Taggarts or anything like that it would be a fresh take on the Jeepers Creepers character now what I will say on that is I hope Victor Salva can of course do something to make a full film possible if that's whether that involves him finally being able to get it on get it done himself or find someone he trusts enough to take over and make the movie for him uh, even if he's not involved with it or quite possibly even somehow some way the some studio takes the ultimate risk and does business with him uh, regardless of the bad press that it brings because anything like that is going to bring, bring bad press I think the ultimate reason we won't see any major studios jumping on a Jeepers Creepers buy or trying to buy out Jeepers Creepers or gain ownership of it is for one thing if Victor Salva is even interested in giving up the rights the other studios might not be interested in the bad press but hopefully one studio would take that risk and we'll just have to see how that kind of plays out but getting into some things i would like to see in a reboot since we wouldn't be able to revisit trisha Derry, and those characters or see any type of continuation of it you could set the movie in modern times kind of make the creeper more of a mothman type of deal where he's a big he's a big thing online but a lot of people don't believe it it's just citing videos where there's nothing nothing concrete because the creeper of course we know the creeper isn't isn't stupid we see that very much so in the original movies he makes mistakes of course some stupid decisions but we know he's not a full-blown idiot we know how he operates he operates as if he is trying to trying to be undercover which he has managed to be very much undercover since from the look of the films not too many people are aware of him as far as we know but I'll, I'll have another video going on in regards to that in the future but getting back to things uh the creeper itself he's very he's very uh methodical very under the radar he understands everything more than what we think and i feel like if we set this in modern times he would still be able to navigate and get around without actually being known by the masses and then on top of that even if his name and his existence was getting talked about more so a lot of people tend to believe what they want to believe that's it's it's like running around saying santa claus is real so a lot of people if you go around and you say santa claus is real they're probably going to think you're crazy even if you show them evidence of it they might denounce it as fake or some type of magical superb photoshop techniques that you have something like that so the creeper could honestly benefit off of the stupidity of humanity and the fact that they would probably attribute that to the fact that this is nothing different than the than the mothman just like the Loch Ness monster and he's basically just an he's he's an urban legend at this point uh but that's what I would have first in a reboot he could still be in a similar area Chipotle County maybe he's in a different part of Florida maybe he's actually deep maybe he's actually deeper in ocala because i believe jeepers creepers was filmed in Denellen, florida we could actually go to ocala deeper in ocala so go to a place similar in florida that has that backwoods type of vibe and he could be terrorizing a nearby town or a nearby a nearby just yeah just a nearby town or city where we have multiple disappearances going on and a lot of people are attributing attributing it to a man who can fly that's a, what a, most people are going to that's what the news and everybody would be reporting about it. They think it's some man with flying capabilities. Others think that it's this mythical creature. 
But of course, like I said, made and made mention of, some people are gonna believe what they wanna believe. A lot of people don't wanna believe that there are things out there that can fly, supernatural things. They're gonna denounce it as far as they can because they don't wanna accept that reality, that they are living with a demon in their town. So who would we follow in a reboot? We could follow a group of characters. So instead of just a brother and sister or yeah, just following two people, we can have a Jeepers Creepers 2 type of deal where we're following a large chunk of people who are, let's say, probably trapped in a nearby diner in a local town in this in this Ocala area, backwoods area that I would like to see the movie shot in. And for some reason or another, let's say that what's going on outside of, in this in, in society at the moment, similar to what's going on right now, let's say there's an outbreak going on. There's an outbreak going on and these people in a diner are about to have much bigger issues on their hands. So the power goes out and at this point there's a lot of curfews, the town shut down. The power goes out because of course the creepers here, he's taken he's taken the power out and let's say he's actually been scouting this place and watching how many people go in this go into this diner that's across a nearby highway in the area that a lot of people just stop into when they're coming into town to get some get a quick bite to eat before they keep on heading to their destination and the residents in this diner at the time when the creeper decides to strike he they're going to be in for a different concern of theirs outside of just an outbreak and in this reality the outbreak yes they're they're they're, they're enduring a pandemic but a lot of people as most of us are tr actually treating this pandemic we're still going to try to navigate and live our lives to the best of our ability because the government is not helping them uh as is what's occurring in our own world <laughs> but yes in this story during this pandemic a diner would be stalked by this monster and the creeper has been scouting this place he's taken over the fact of how many potential new victims go into this place and he realized that he has a chance for a buffet here so he stalks this area he stalks the people in this diner and there's no power there so a lot of them probably only have access to things like their cell phone they can call the police if they want to but the police the police could of course they always show up at the end of the movie so the police wouldn't even be a factor just in any horror movie that's the the worst logic in all horror movies the cops always show up at the end even when you call them so <laughs> the creeper dines on this di the, the creeper dines in on this diner and he's stalking the individual let's say we have about six different people that are involved uh we could have a group of young adults some elderly and some middle-aged people and i feel like a cast if i were to have a cast i'd probably throw in samuel l jackson jamie lee curtis uh some few other people i'm trying to think of mel gibson i'm trying to think of the guy who played the old man from don't breathe I forget his name. I believe that guy's name is Stephen Lang or something to that effect. Let's throw in Jane Levy. A, a lot of people who are fans of 13 Reasons Why throw in Dylan Minnett, who plays Clay in the series. We could throw in a bunch of upcoming stars. Uh, the the Andy Matichak, who plays Laurie Strode's granddaughter in the new re-editions of the Halloween movies. We could throw in, like, you see what I'm saying here? Like, we're throwing in some legacy actors with some uprising stars and people who, some stars that people are already fans of. And that could be, I, I think right there, that's a pretty good cast so far, in my honest opinion. And Jonathan Breck, whether he's even around, because it, it depends on when this movie will happen. If it happens in a time between now and let's say 2020 something, of course, I would like to see Jonathan Breck back as the creeper, but otherwise they'd have to find somebody else that I can't really think of at the time. I feel like it doesn't really matter though who plays the creeper, as long as you can match the nuances of Jonathan Breck and you can match that. Because the because the design itself, I feel like can fit anybody. It's not, it's not something that's just synonymous with Jonathan Breck. Of course, we identify Jonathan Breck as the creeper, but the makeup can be applied to anybody. Just as long as you can create those nuances and those movements and those mannerisms that Jonathan Breck mastered, I feel like we can have anybody play the creeper. But, and I honestly would like to see the movie directed by Neil Marshall, because again, Neil Marshall, he has a hand in plenty of well-received uh, monster movies, The Descent, Dog Soldiers, a lot of people are a big fan of The Descent 2. That's a little bit lackluster in my opinion. But I feel like Neil Marshall would be a great hand in a Jeepers Creepers movie. 
Some people like to see James Wan. I personally would prefer it be Neil Marshall taking over the helm from Victor Salva. The script could still be written by Victor Salva, but otherwise maybe a co-written script by James Wan and the guy who directed The Invisible Man. I can't think of his name at the moment, but they also co-wrote Saw together, so I think that would be interesting, but it's directed by Neil Marshall. Uh, but let me know what you guys think about down, this, down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links on my social media accounts, my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there to let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you would like me to cover in the future. With all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.